In this video, I'm going to talk about uh, Grasshopper. And uh, the reason why I wanted to go over Grasshopper is because um, of this question here uh, about taking an object and having it uh, copied many, many times around a spiral. Um, and this seems like something that should be easy to do, uh, like you should be able to do an array along the line. Uh, but this is a little more complicated because with the array, you would want the object to uh, be aligned. Um, and so in this case, if it's a staple, and the staple is in a roll, um, you would want all of the staples to align uh, in the orientation of that curve. Um, for example, it should always be facing inside, inwards. And so if you do an array along curve, you may not be able to do that. Um, so let's try it really quick. We'll do array. Uh, and we have the array uh, on surface or array curve. And so if we do array curve, uh, we can select an object and um, press enter, base point. So that's why you have a problem, right? You're going to have a single base point, but it goes from a circular orientation to a straight orientation. Um, so for the base point, we can select a uh, point for the object. Uh, so that's going to be here, 0, 0, that's the origin, and select the path here. Um, and then we have to select the distances from each other and the number of items. Uh, let's put something such as 1000. And here you can see, yes, it follows the curve, but it's not, it's not changing its orientation. So if you look at it, um, from a two-dimensional plane, you can see it's not really moving. It's staying, it's staying in the same position and just following the curve. It's copying itself along the curve. And what we need this to do is uh, follow the curve and rotate as the rotation of the curve uh, occurs. Um, so let me show you how you would do that. And the only way I can think of doing that would be in Grasshopper. So uh, Grasshopper is here. It's uh, it's basically a plugin but now it's fully integrated as part of Rhino. So you just have this button and you just click on it and Grasshopper will, will load. Um, now, I already had Grasshopper loaded. So depending on, um, you know, if this is your first time loading Grasshopper, this might take a long time. Um, yeah, in this case, I had already opened it, so it opens very quickly. So moving on. Um, what we need to do here is we need to create what's called um, a geometry or an object and a curve. And we already have them here. So here you can see you have your points, you have your circles, you have all of these shapes, and uh, you have geometry. And the curves that we had was, um, it's one of these. Anyways, I don't want to get sidetracked with this, but basically you can upload or um, attach link your geometry that you have here in Rhino into this little this little window. Um, and so the way this would work is if I created a geometry, so I can double click, this window comes up and I type in geometry. And the geometry box comes up and you can see it's orange. And when I go up here, it will say this object contains no warning, one warning, not no warning, there's one warning, which says, um, Basically, there's nothing inside the box. Click on the balloon to see uh, everything. Yeah. So if you click on this little window, it says floating parameter geometry failed to collect data, which means there is no data within the geometry. Um, so the way it works for the geometry node for this thing here is you can do a right click on it and you can say set one geometry or multiple geometry. So that's how you uh, basically refer to your existing geometry into Grasshopper. You can also create your geometry here in Grasshopper. Uh, so it's kind of like two softwares, but they work together. And so what I did here is um, I basically set one geometry and selected this little, uh, this little model. And so now I've got this model here in Grasshopper, and I can start uh, playing with the data. Um, also, one, one detail I should mention here is when you have the data attached, if I was to delete the geometry, I would lose, you know, I would lose the object as a reference within Grasshopper. 
So what I did in this particular file is I did a right click and then I said keep the geometry and you can do that by internalizing, it's called internalized data. And so once you click on internalized data, uh, anything you put here in this geometry node stays there uh, even if you delete the geometry in, in high now. So that's what I did here. I just wanted to quickly explain how you can modify um, your uh, object, your geometry, or modify your curve and assign a new curve. Um, for example, if you didn't want this curve, you wanted to make modifications, you could just clear. So you can clear the value here. Or you can just go back and do the same thing. Just do a right click and say, I want to set a geometry. And then you click on your geometry. Uh, in this case, it would be the same one, just this one curve. And then when you go, go back here, you may want to have to, let's see, if I delete it, does it lose it? Yes, it does. Okay. Um, so yeah, so anytime you add an object, if you want to make sure you don't delete it in Rhino, or if you close the file and open Grasshopper in a new fresh, um, a new file, um, then it's always nice to internalize the data. So that's what I did here with the curve and the geometry. Now, how did I even get this uh, spiral? Well, to get the spiral, I went in here uh, from a right view, and I just typed in the spiral command. And here you have different options. One of them is to create a flat spiral. And here it asks for the center point, the outer point, and then you can define the spiral you want to, to use or to make. Um, and so how did I do this transition? Well, that was easy. I just made a straight line and then blend a curve. And if I do a blend curve from here to there, you can get a smooth transition between the two and with curvature it should do a job. So that's essentially all I did to get this uh, complex spiral uh, that then goes to a straight. So moving on to the grasshopper definition, you can see it looks a little complicated. You have some wires crossing, so there's a lot going on. Uh, but really it's simple. You have a curve. The curve is divided. It's divided into the number of points that I want, so the number of staples that I want. So in this case, it is uh, 1000 and 1, because 0 also counts. 0 counts as, uh, as 1 point. Um, so if I go here, actually it doesn't, not in this case. Um, so usually in Grasshopper, the list always starts from 0 uh, to whatever number you have. So if I look at the list here, number of points, um, see the first point is number 0, not number 1. So that's why I figured if I set the number to 0, I would get nothing, which is not true because this is the number of points. So Anyway, um, it's something to keep in mind. Sometimes you look at your list and um, actually this is one of the case. If I say 140, I don't get 140, I get 141 because it adds a zero as one. Um, so again, that's a little complicated, a little more advanced, but you don't have to worry about that. Um, all you have to worry about for, for this demo to understand the concept is I'm just taking this curve and I'm using this node called divide curve. And then I'm defining the number of points. In this case, that's the number of staples that I want to add. And usually you start with a small number as you build uh, your uh, definition. So let's do something like 100 staples. Now here there is this thing happening, which is um, it's a plugin, and uh, this plugin creates a block. I didn't want to keep the staple as an object, so here it's just a geometry, so it's it's an object. Um, but coming out of this node, it becomes a block, and so what that does is it keeps the file really really light because a block uh, is uh, an instance of the original object. So it takes less space. It's basically a simple copy. It's not a new object with its own definition, its own control points. It's the same object being uh, visually represented at a different position. So it takes less space. Um, 
Moving on, so here you have all of these points. What I'm doing here is a little bit of uh, mathematics. Um, what happens is you have to define the number, and as it does that, uh, it looks at the spacing between the points. And in doing so, it creates something called the, the T parameter. And the T parameter is um, it's a point that goes towards the curve. So it's, it's kind of like looking at the orientation of a curve. And so I can use that to create um, so you can see here it draws a straight line, which is a tangent. It's tangent to the curve. So no matter what curvature I have, I always have a t value, which gives me the tangency. And if I take this tangent and rotate it by 90 degrees, then I have the position I want for a step on. And I can change that. I can rotate more or less. So that's what I did here. I have this angle that lets me uh, rotate the positioning of 360 degrees. So yeah, that's essentially all that's happening here. It's creating a bunch of planes. You can see them in three dimensions here, which uh, it gets a bit overwhelming, but uh, you get the point. You have a bunch of planes, and if I reduce the number of, uh, of points, let's say four of them, you can see how the planes are flat with the orientation of a spiral. So that's how I'm doing that. I'm basically creating points with planes, and the planes um, look at the curve for uh, positioning an object on that curve um, using that plane. And then this is where I do that. I do the orient uh, command, or I use the orient node of Grasshopper to take the, uh, the instance, the block instance, and position it based on its origin, which is just the xy, so that's the default uh, plane. And then I take the object and put it each time for each of the points um, onto the plane that has the correct orientation that I want. And finally, the result is this uh, geometry. So if I make this uh, visible, this is not what I was expecting. Um, let's see, geometry. Okay, and we are back. Uh, so I figured out what the problem was. Uh, let's go back to Grasshopper. Let's open this up and... Uh, oh, well, that's a problem. Here it is. Um, so the problem was my uh, object... Ooh, yeah, this is where I went wrong. Assign an object, assign a curve. So they are reversed. Um, so yeah, what we want is the upper one should be the object and the lower one should be the curve. So that's why I got confused. I was uh, I was using a curve here for the object and a curve here uh, for the curve. As I was doing the demo, I assigned this curve twice, one for the object and once for the curve. Um, so here, let me select the step on that I created and let's assign it as the geometry. Let's internalize the data. And then if I go back here, everything should be working fine now. And of course, it does not. Okay, uh, so the geometry works, and uh, this one here does not. Um, so by the way, uh, for this uh, plugin here, if you do a right click, you have different options. And in this case, because I'm new to this plugin, I'm using the um, not the safe, not the modest, the moderate, but the uh, bulldoze, which is the, the most, uh, it's basically brute force, right? It's forcing a situation where it will create the geometry. Uh, because I'm not very familiar with this plugin, this is the first day, first time I use it. I'm guessing there's a bunch of settings I'm supposed to apply here for uh, the back settings, and I haven't applied anything. Um, so I'm just applying the geometry and making sure that, uh, yeah, that it backs something. So, yeah, so that's basically it. You choose the number, let's say 1000. And why is it not creating 1000 planes? Oh, this is the angle. 1000 is the number. And now it's upside down, so I want it to be at 180. And the number is 1000. So now we have 1000 step -alls. We can hide some of these objects. So this is what we would get. Uh, and to bake it, we can just click on the bake button here. Now if I close Grasshopper, 
I can see the objects. So now I have 1000 stepper plus the one which is an instance. And so this file is around one megabyte. So it's, it's relatively small. Um, yeah, it's relatively small and it does, it does the job for, for this purpose um, and keeps the, the file light as it creates this pretty complex uh, geometry. Um, now the last thing that I didn't mention, I, maybe I should have started there, uh, is how do we install the plugins? Because here in Grasshopper, which comes by default with Rhino 7, I'm using uh, one plugin in this case. I think there's only one plugin, there might be two. Uh, maybe the three point plane is also a plugin. Um, yeah, I believe there's only one plugin. So uh, the one plugin I'm using here is this one called uh, LA Front. Um, and so to install a plugin that you do not have, the easiest way would be to go here in Grasshopper in your command and you type in uh, package. package manager. Here it is. Um, so if you click on package manager, or you just type in this command, you will have this window here with all of the plugins you may have installed, and you can go under install and see the plugins. Uh, you can also update them. Sometimes there's a new version that comes up and you can uh, uninstall or install uh, the latest version. So this is the plugin I'm using here. It's called Lfront. So you would go here and search, or you would go online, and online you would uh, either type it in or, um, you know, use the scroller and look for Elf Front. So here it is. That's how you would install it. You would click here and install. So if you open this Grasshopper file and it says you're missing one plugin and another, this is what I would recommend doing. Just type in the package manager command, install it, go in Grasshopper, and then you can start playing with this definition. So yeah, I hope this helps and that this uh, inspires you to learn Grasshopper.